Okay, so for this part of the question, it's a bit more involved. What I've done though is I've tried to sketch the information we're given. So we've got our unit vectors i and j acting east and north respectively. And we know that the particle p start at this point o when t equals zero, started off with a velocity of two minus three meters per second. And we're told that it moves to a with constant acceleration, which we found out in the previous part was this vector here. Although you might have it as half of three as being 1.5 and half of minus four as minus two. And after two seconds, it arrives at the point A with a position vector 7i minus 10j, which I've just written as a coordinate there. Okay, so we're told then that when it gets to A, its acceleration changes to 4i plus 8.8j meters per second per second. And it travels to the point B where it's going in a northeasterly direction. And we've got to find out the time then that it takes to go from A to B. So what I'm going to do is say, well, OK, let's set this time here at A as, say, t equals zero. Right. And we're going to need to work out the time t when it gets to this point uh, at B. Now, what we know is that it's moving in a northeasterly direction. So if I was to mark in the components of that velocity there, I would expect them to be equal. OK, so we've got one there, one there. I could call them a OK, in the i direction and a in the j direction. That would give us a velocity through here, a final velocity through there. Let's call it big V. That would be 45 degrees. So these components would be equal for V. Well, in order to do this, we've got to do this in two parts. OK, we've got to find out what the final velocity is at A. I'll mark that in as just V. Once we've found out this value for V, we can then use this as our U vector, if you like. Uh, for the initial velocity when we go from A to B. We'll have the U, we'll have the acceleration, and we'll use this velocity V here. And we'll be able to set up an equation with T in it where we'll be able to compare the two components here. We'll be able to say that these components are equal. This is the crucial point to this question, in my opinion. OK, so bit involved. Let's just start off then by considering the motion from O to A. When we do that, OK, we're going to use V, the final velocity here, equals the initial velocity U plus A times the time T. OK, V equals U plus A T. Because we know U, u is 2 minus 3, so we've got 2 minus 3 here. And we've got the acceleration, which I'm going to keep as a half of 3 minus 4. But you might have it in as 1.5 and minus 2. OK, so that's what I've got there. Times the time t, which is this time here of 2 seconds. If you work that out, you'll find you get 5 minus 7. OK, so that's our final velocity vector here. Now, all I need to do now is just consider the motion from A to B. So let's just put that in. Considering the motion from A to B, what I'm going to use is V equals U plus AT again. So let's just put that in that V equals U plus AT. And using this now, we see that our final velocity v here has two components, a and a, ai plus aj. And is equal to u. u is now this velocity here because it becomes the initial velocity at a as we move from a to b. So we saw that that was 5 minus 7. So put that in as 5 minus 7. 
and then we've got plus the acceleration where we're given that, that's 4, 8.8 .8. and we've got our time t which is the big T, the time it takes to go from here from A to B. Okay. Now we know that the components are equal. Okay, these two components for the final velocity are equal because it's moving in a northeasterly direction. So all I've got to do is just equate them. I'm going to start with the bottom line. Okay, that is that minus 7 plus the 8.8 .8 times the t equals the top line here, 5 plus 4t. I only did that so that the rearrangement is just easier because all I'm going to do is take 4t from both sides and add 7 to both sides. And if you do that, you're going to get 8.8t minus 4t, which is 4.8t. And 5 plus the 7 is 12. So to get t, obviously, all we need to do is just do 12 divided by 4.8. And that goes in really nicely. It gives you a nice exact value of 2.5, OK? That time t is measured in seconds. So there we go, time taken to travel from A to B, two and a half seconds. So hope you're able to do that one. Again, if not, hopefully the video has been able to show you the way that I would approach it anyway. Okay.